Ayan na, ayan na, kamusta kayo dyan mga kameta, pasensya na medyo late tayo, nag-start again. I'm sure you had all sorts of very fantastic discussions dun sa mga kabilang channels. Once again, pasalamat tayo sa lahat ng mga nanonood sa atin. I know nagkaroon ng internet connection problems, unfortunately, kahapon dun sa live stream natin, dun sa kauna-una natin in-person na vlogs with si birthday boy, Kristan. I was a bit conscious na birthday niya at uh, kailangan niya siguro humabol dun sa mga... Um, uh, personal and, and private commitments obviously to celebrate his special day so once again, super birthday happy birthday dun sa uh, isa sa mga pinakamabait at uh, magulang na, ano, <laughs> na vloggers dyan sa bansa and of course, thank you so much both kay Mark and Chris for gracing us yesterday to have this fantastic discussion obviously, of course, you were able to catch also the Talagang ano na, sinulit namin yung, uh, yung pag-renta, uh, pag-reserve namin doon. We also had uh, attorney Star Lamparo, of course, to also discuss divorce law, uh, potential co-waranto, and uh, yung existing preventative suspension order against Alice Go, not to mention cyber libel, um, not to mention you know all sorts of different issues, including ICC and what could be the modalities under which Duterte could be arrested by the ICC in the coming months. If totoo at tama ito mga predictions or mga prognostications sa mga iba't ibang tao, including yung mga, of course, in-interview natin like Senator Trillanes. And to a certain degree, of course, yung paborito nyo, yung crush ng bayan, si Ronald Alden Liamas. Yan. Mga yan. So, um, for some reason, I don't know kahapon, um, uh, we didn't get touched a lot on this issue. But I think kailangan natin balikan ito because I, I'm, I'm 100% sure now we saw in other uh, you know, mga kabilang channels and mga in mainstream discussion lumalabas na ulit itong issue na ito. Ito yung mga corruption scandals nung panahon ni Digong. No? Pag-usapan natin yan because obviously Farmali is back in the media, in the headlines with a vengeance. Um, so for some reason, we didn't manage because there, there was a lot that I wanted to talk to uh, uh, talk about with si Lacris and and with uh, with uh, kaibigan natin si 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 Mark um, uh, among our other guests it is formalish name but again I I, I was concerned I was a bit conscious about yung time niya again of course of course again see even if may, alam ko yung iba medyo hater mode lang sila uh, I, I get it pasensya na if medyo I over talk ka pun hindi ko naman dinideny na madaldal tayo but uh, sometimes what happens is that if I'm sleepy and tired or I'm stressed and we had a lot of technical issues kapon kasi ako nag-set up lahat set up ng lighting set up ng cameras there were like four different cameras there and then nakita ko dito na may issue ng konti dito sa sa ano natin um, unfortunately dito sa sa internet natin dami nagreklamo so medyo na ano ako sa na na, na flustered ako so my tendency sometimes is to over talk not only and the more over talk actually pag the things uh, ano um uh, uh pag may mga technical issues so i i take your um honest uh i take your honest uh critic I, I take constructive criticisms and pasensya na minsan ho nagkakulang din tayo but anyway i think we got a lot out of our discussions kaapon and uh, um, bukas of course um yeah, hopefully abangan niyo diyan sa youtube ipo-post natin uh etong uh uh, interviews natin with uh, uh, sila Kristan in the afternoon habol ko rin ito sa Facebook obviously um, mukhang sa YouTube mas interesaron tao sa mga political issues nowadays I don't, I don't know what happens sa Facebook uh, is it the algorithm and dami nagreklamo na hindi sila na notify so please put notifications on or subscriptions on or whatever dito sa Facebook para rin updated kayo pag when we go live or when we post interesting stuff so marami salamat again for your constructive criticisms yung, yung mga iba naman na haters etc etc uh, bala na kayo sa buhay nyo. Uh, problema niyan yan. But, but dun sa constructive criticism nyo, point taken. And again, apologies. But I think we still had a very, very interesting discussion. Uh, nevertheless. Pag-usapan natin ito, guys. Itong issue ng farmali among others. Because, sa akin palagay, on one hand, isa sa mga pinaka-turn off kay Digong and his legacies, of course, yung West Philippines issue. And what many see as his subservience. And as a uh, Singaporean friend put it, I'm not going to say who said, yung slavish attitude ni, uh, ni Duterte vis-a-vis -vis China. Now, by the way, I was supposed to actually, we were supposed to have our meta earlier today with a professor friend of mine from Singapore, 
but due to some family emergency issue, uh, we had to postpone it. But hopefully we'll have it later this month again. So I'm trying to get points of view from, from experts all around the world. So we had friends from the U.S., multiple friends from the United States, from New York, from Rhode Island, uh, of course from California with us. Uh, did us a deep dive uh, reboot natin ng um, discussion natin. We're hoping to get also people from major down of down under uh, soon, God willing. So don't worry, we're, there are a lot we're doing. By the way, na posting natin kanina, uh, yung eto, yung bulwaga ng mga bayani uh, edition ng interviews natin with the with the legendary Ronald Liamas. Please watch, guys. Support yan. In effort ko yan, ha? naganap kami ng tamang venue. Shout out dyan sa UP Asian Center for allowing us to use that beautiful venue uh, for very interesting discussion and relevant, of course, sa ating bayan, sa ating kasaysayan, sa ating mga bayani. O, oh, in-edit, edit ko pa yan, in-effort pa yan. So, please, uh, pakita ng konting, ano lang, konting pagmamahal. Alright? So, uh, check nyo yan. Latest, ito yung latest video natin dyan sa YouTube. Pakicheck yan. I'll try to also share it dyan sa Facebook in the coming days. So, thank you very much, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Itong... Uh, and don't continue support na binibigay niya sa amin uh, throughout the years and throughout the months. No? Uh, hindi pa decades, per God willing, na dyan tayo pupunta. Anyway, balikan natin guys. Um, let's talk about these things. Because sa akin palagay, one, isa sa mga pinakamalaking problema ni Digong ngayon is yung kanyang legacy pagdating sa West Philippine Sea. And in particular, of course, uh, pinag-usapan natin dito guys, yung kanyang uh, uh, gentleman's agreement and other forms of potentially, some would say, treasonous or at the very least, ruinous or deleterious, diba? So, if not treasonous, if not uh, ruinous, at the very least, deleterious, no? Na agreements with China which may have uh, undermined our national security. Now, not to mention yung territorial integrity natin. Pinag-usapan natin yan with, uh, with Justice Carpio, pinag-usapan natin yan with uh, uh, Admiral Ong, with Attorney uh, Batumbakal, among other experts. So I don't think that we need to overdo this over and over again. But uh, anyway, I appreciate guys itong, uh, uh, itong interventions that we're also seeing right now on another front. So without a question, guys, we see a big, big, big move in the Philippine Congress and potentially also soon dito sa Philippine uh, House of Representatives uh, actually it's happening as we speak to actually also look dun sa governance particularly potential corruption scandals under the Duterte administration now obviously everyone is familiar dito guys stop yung mga commentary na technical don't distract me I'm trying to focus guys okay um <laughs> yan yan na mahirap dito ang one man team kaya okay Balikan natin, guys, pag-usapan natin yan because yung West Philippines legacy, alam na alam natin na this is a huge, huge problem. Alright? It's a huge, huge, huge problem. And there are investigations as we speak. But the other thing that I think is important and potentially mas tinging pa ito, potentially, because it's not the first time that the Duterte's have been accused of, uh, you know, doing a little bit mumbo-jumbo stuff when it comes to fiscal resources. If you're not, I mean, Un- unless you were in a different universe, don't forget na not long ago, ang pinakamalaking issue sa ating bansa is yung confidential funds issue. Right. I'm not saying it's necessarily a case of graft or corruption, but nevertheless, it's something that doesn't taste nice, doesn't look nice, doesn't sound legit, right? But if you look at it, while the confidential fund issue somehow put the uh, office of the vice president on the defensive, and to a certain degree, of course, also marginalized Sara Duterte when it comes to mainstream discussion. Ang, ang, ang issue dito, guys, is that pagdating sa surveys, hindi significantly bumaba yung numbers ni Sara Duterte. In fact, only recently nakikita natin na medyo bumaba, uh, bumaba yung numbers ni Sara Duterte to around 60%-ish territory. And that's significant. And this is on Okta, by the way, um, uh, survey. So we see this decline, but this decline did not happen after yung confidential fund issue. Um, I think the last time there was a significant drop in the numbers of both Sara Duterte and BBM, mas may kinalaman ito sa issue ng inflation and living standards and cost of living, uh, so mga economic problems. But as I said, although yung issue ng confidential fund, yung spending, I don't know, 125 million pesos in 11 days, allegedly, even though the confidential fund issue may not have hurt Sara Duterte in terms of her popularity or undermined yung kanyang 
bass or at least soft bass, let's put it that way. Kasi yung bass bass will stand by you no matter what, mga loyalists yan. But yung soft bass, I think if a number of things come together, it could be really tricky for the Dutertes, right? Because yung confidential fund, pwede natin debate yun yan eh. Um, obviously, anyone who knows what's going on will have serious issues. But at the surface level, kung medyo partisan ka, medyo hindi ka nag-abuing ng attention sa mga bagay-bagay, at pero mo sabihin, bakit? May confidential fund din naman si Aquino. Bakit? I mean, you can play that game eh. Bakit? Bakit? Ganon, di ba? So, so I think the confidential fund issue was not articulated in a way that came off as a brazen misuse of government funds. To, not to us, kasi tayo medyo alam natin nangyari sa mundo, pero dun sa mga soft base ni, ni Sarah, di ba? So siguro sab- sabi natin mga 45% out of 60 to 70% niya. Hindi masyadong ano eh, it didn't take as much root, no? Uh, hindi siya nag-resonate masyado. And my sense is, that's partly because when it comes to Duterte, one of his points of popularity is supposedly yung kanyang anti-corruption stance. It's supposedly yung kanyang, okay, sige, sabihin natin marahas siya, sige, sabihin natin brutal siya, sige, kahit tanggapin natin na tal- baka totoo talaga yung EJK. Ang sasabihin ng mga supporters na, pero hindi siya corrupt, pero galit siya sa corruption, pero he get things done. And I think that's why the inves- investigations now are important because they, they question that very premise. They go deep down into the whole branding of Duterte as supposedly a guy who gets things done, a guy who's not corrupt. And as Duterte put it very nicely, right? Not even a whiff of corruption, right? So this is very important. And so, balikan natin yung kasaysayan, no? So if you look at it, when Duterte ran for the presidency, he had one thing in common with Pinoy when Pinoy also ran for the presidency. And that was the argument na galit siya sa corruption. Na pag siya naging presidente, he's gonna get rid of all the crooks, uh, the corrupt people, the oligarchs, turgista, criminal. So he's gonna be a kind of a cleansing exercise. A, a democratically elected cleansing exercise. Yun yung branding ni Duterte uh, sa sarili niya. And in many ways, it worked. Because if you look at Davao, for instance, if you look at the World Bank studies and different kind of studies, it would say that Davao has one of the most efficient business processing um, uh, your bureaucracy. So, napakababa yung red tape daw sa Davao. Based, so, yung ease of doing business ng Davao is very, very good. No? Um, so, and the Duterte administration can point out, oh, tignan nyo man, uh, Duterte people point out, oh, tignan nyo man, Davao, malinis, maayos, walang krimen, ganun-ganun. So, and most importantly, yung branding ni Duterte sarili niya na humble tao siya, na nakaganon siya. Eh, may ma-hater tayo na isang araw na nagsabi na, anong sinasabi na si Duterte ay ganon, nauto ka naman sa... I was talking about this campaign financing. Alright? Yan, yan, yan ang problema ko sa mga ibang tao dyan. Hindi nakikinig, hindi nakikinig, tapos nagmamatalina, nagmamagaling. Tapos pag pinoyin out mo sila, ayan, hurt na naman yung feelings sila. Um, I was talking about the campaign financing of Duterte. I never bought yung propaganda niya, but um, yung simpleng tao siya. Yung pagiging simpleng tao niya, um, mm, narinig na natin kay Alice ko yan, yung mga simpleng tao. Tapos yung isa, naka-BMW bike. Yung isa, kabila naman, may Royce Royce McLaren. No? Or walang McLaren, pero may chopper. Diba? Um, no, let's go back to this. Because now, the premise of that very argument is under question. Right? Now, in fairness to Duterte, magaling talaga siya mag-perform. Right? Kaya nga performative talaga yung kanyang approach to politics. And it worked a lot. And I'll tell you why it works. So if you look at it, ang magaling kay Digong is magaling yung yung ano niya eh. He would do some symbolic act here and there to project some sort of contrived political reality. Or to reinforce a certain branding. Diba? ba? Hallmark sa kanya. So, if you remember, guys, one of the things that Duterte did early on in his office is he fired his former spokesman as the NIA chief. As soon as, as he put it, there was a whiff of corruption. That was a very interesting period because some people will actually say, well, they're not, they were not necessarily a fan of Siguro maalala niya itong taong to, si Peter Lavinia. Siya po yung spokesman talaga ni Digong, through and through. And then later on, of course, he took over the National Irrigation Administration or NIA. But later on, nung nagkaroon ng konting mga corruption issue, uh, and according to Duterte, sabi niya, he fired Lavinia for allegedly receiving 
may 40% cut daw siya sa uh, projects or whatever, right? So, eto ah, ito yung sinabi ni Duterte nung February 24, this is 2017. Very early on sa kanyang administration. So, this is what Duterte said dun sa isang speech niya, na he just fired an appointee who is from Davao City. Any spokesman, sabi niya, when I said there will be no corruption, there will be no corruption. As a matter of fact, I fired last night one taga Davao for simply making a remark. Sabi ko nga, he's out. And I told him, even a whiff of corruption, talagang tanggalin kita. Alright? Talagang tanggalin kita. Tapos, uh, so, a court, a court, so, actually, nag- nagkaroon ng meeting between NI directors with Duterte sa Panakan noong February 23, uh, 2017, uh, kung saan um, they, so- they said that Lavinia supposed over... Na, sabi ni Lavinia, sir, wala naman akong ginawa, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. So, there were some sort of discussion behind the scenes na wag naman natin i-fire ka agad ito, sir. Pag-usapan natin, baka naman wala nangyari. Let's not jump to conclusions. But... Uh, Pero according dun sa ibang reports, yung dati niyang spokesman would say, kayo ang bahala sa akin when there, was disc- there were discussions of projects, different projects dun sa regional office. Let me show you guys the exact quote here. Ah. Kasi, I want you guys, to, this is important. Kasi, we have to go back to the very, ge- the, 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 the origins, no? Nang itong image of Duterte as, you know, the, the, the cleanser, right? As the, you know, the dirty Harry who's who's not corrupt, who's incorruptible, but of course he uses mga violent uh, you know, means to protect the law-abiding citizen. Yung mga ganyan-ganyan, charat-charat na yan. So, ito yung mga quotes from Digong nung time na finar niya, yung kanyang spokesman. Right? And di, here you can see, guys, talaga, magaling talaga mag-performance itong tao na ito. Diba? Na, ito na nga, spokesman ko nga, ito na nga, taga-davao na nga, finar ko nga ito. So, this episode for me was very important. And I'll explain to you guys very shortly. Let's, let's just finish this. So, biglang si Duterte, ayan, letter P, letter I, alam niya na, hindi natin sabihin, mga matinig tayo, disente tayo, sabi niya, may tanggalin talaga ako. Tapos, minura-mura niya, nung allegedly, ito si Lavinia involved dun sa mga kickbacks daw. Um, may ibang version yung dating kami ni Secretary si Evasco Jr., who would also later on be eased out. Sabi na, hindi naman nasak, pero nag- nagparesign na lang or something like that. But anyway, uh, si Lavinia himself actually denied this. This said, itong, uh, so I've been vilified in the past, my name used, abused, and maligned. Recently, there have been efforts to discredit me again. There are rumors circulating that I've asked money from NI contractors. These are not true. To spare the president from these embarrassing stories, particularly in these times of intensive attacks on him, I have quietly left the government. I have neither personal vested interest in it nor ill intent towards NIA and the whole government which we're, we're trying to reform. So in short, uh, nagsakripisyo na lang daw siya, lumabas na lang siya para wala nang hanash, para hindi maapektuhan yung reputation ng napakagaling na presidente ni Duterte. So, for me, this period was very important because if you remember, guys, this is where Digong was able to do something that Aquino was not able to do. Because President Aquino, God bless his soul, um, I think a- anyone with a decent heart and a functioning gray matter knows that pagdaling sa Aquinos, walang bahit na duda when it comes to issues of corruption or government. They were clean on that. I mean, show me any, you know, if there were really something, they were pinned down already during the third time. Wala. But one major criticism against Pinoy was that he didn't do much about potential corruption or alleged corruption dun sa mga ranks niya, uh, ng mga kabineta niya or mga people na malapit sa kanya. Of course, you had the DAP scandal, uh, Disbursement Acceleration Program scandal, right uh during pinoy uh again w- please refer to the interview i had with uh uh suzara uh, uh who worked in the dbm before it's there as a podcast not and for the context so i don't want it but there were also other issues for instance the dotr department of transportation yung mga palpak dyan sa nangyari sa 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 uh, mrt yung mga laglagbala scandals na nangyari pa noon ni Pinoy. Lahat ng mga yan. Um, not to mention, of course, also issues sa Department of Agriculture. So there was so there were, there were all sorts of things being hurled against Abaya, Alcala, all of these people around around uh, Pinoy. Not to mention, of course, also the Mama Sapano because the criticism against Pinoy was that he, put in, he placed in charge um, uh, General Purisima 
uh, who was already under investigation to run a very sensitive military operation, counter-terror operation, which was the which was the Mama Sapanaman. So in short, what happened there was Pinoy ran on a very strict anti-corruption initiative, and yet during his time, not a single high-level official was fired or put under investigation, even when there was more than a whiff of potential anomalies, etc. Now, again, as I said, don't say DAP, I defer to people, good people like Cesar Mons, who explain the technicalities of this because the DAP one, uh, it was ruled as unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, but it was not ruled necessarily as a corruption case. It was kind of a usurpation of the power of the purse of the Congress. So major constitutional argument. But nevertheless, and dami kasi nangyayari ng panahon ni Pinoy eh, na parang, mm, I'm not sure about it, yung mga laglag bala issue. People, some people were placed in charge of Mama Sabana. So please, for instance, listen to my interview with uh, Mayor Magalong, right, who back then as a number two at the Philippine National Police investigated the circumstances of of the uh, of what went wrong during the Mama Sapano and the the, the police angle among others. So I want you guys to to look at those things. We can have a debate about whether actually talagang nangyaring corruption or anything like that. But I think the problem with the BBM, uh, sorry, with the Aquino administration was even when there were high suspicions of misconduct or abuse of power or or, or at least may bahit na duda or shadow of doubt about whether good governance was there. Pinoy didn't fire anyone. Didn't fire anyone na malapit sa kanya. So I think this is where the populist genius of Duterte came in. Magaling siya sa pagka-performative na. And by firing yung kanyang spokesman, campaign spokesman, someone in Davao, he sent the signal na he's, he's really not a corrupt person and there's no one above the law and, and wala siyang kinikilingan, wala siyang pinoprotektaan. So again, we can have a debate about whether really Lavinia was involved in that because again, there was no due process. Was there a due process? Alam mo naman kay Digong, he was never a fan of due process. Ironically, for a lawyer, ex-prosecutor, he was never a fan of that. He would just... But from a political messaging, from an image branding point of view, him firing very early on, half a year into office, his former spokesman, a close friend of him, just because may bahit na duda na baka involved siya sa corruption, that, I think, was very powerful in driving home itong brand niya as Duterte the Punisher. Duterte na hindi corrupt. Galit sa criminal, galit sa corruption. So, this is where... Oh, we can have a long conversation about Yolanda too. Again, as I said, I think there were some... Um, um, you know, there's a debate we can have about who's really most at fault. But then again, Yolanda, SAF, DAP, breakdowns in MRT, Laglagbala, all of this, but no one at the highest level was fired. Even sa Nai, if I'm not missing, even after all the Laglagbala crisis, walang na-fire. So, that really helped Digong. Eh. When Digong comes in and immediately fires his ex-spokesman, right, uh, and sends the signal, oh, see, ako, iba ako. So, this is where in politics, optics matter. Perform performativity matters. And Digong was really, really good in that. Sobrang galing siya in terms of that. And that's why I think even if a lot of people say, yeah, medyo hindi ako agree sa drug war niya, medyo hindi ako natutuba dun sa China policies na, they would say, pero tignan mo naman si Dugong, hindi nga korap eh, tignan mo, bati nga spokesman niya, finari niya kaagat. So this is, I think, where the genius of the Duterte's populism comes in when it comes to creating this image na hindi talaga siya korap, etc. But we knew, guys, that things were actually, obviously, you know, <laughs> more interesting than that, if you can put it that way, di ba? So, bago po tayo pumunta sa issue ng Farmali, let me remind everyone na before the whole pandemic, before the whole Farmali scandal, before the whole concerns about Duque, etc., actually, the Philippines had its worst ranking when it comes to corruption in almost a decade, nung 2019, so by 2019 pa lang, there were enough concerns about corruption in the Philippines that the Duterte rank was lowest rank for the Philippines in seven years, right? So this bleeds way into the Aquino administration. So objectively speaking, or at least based on whatever objective evaluation or index we can have of, of corruption in the country, actually lumala yung corruption sa panahon ni Digong kumpara kay Pinoy. Kung tinignan mo dito, guys, yung mga, for instance, yung international corruption rankings natin, right? Or in perceptions of corruption, etc. 
So this is where, guys, we can talk about West Philippine Sea. We can talk about this gentleman's agreement. We can talk about a lot of mumbo mum jumbo happened. One thing that we that has not been talked about enough is the fact that the Philippines corruption rankings actually worsened even before pandemic and before Farmali and all of this issue came out. And then, of course, the Farmali thing happened, right? And then, of course, this Farmali thing happened. And we all know that the Farmali thing is potentially just the tip of the iceberg, right? Right? It's potentially just the tip of the iceberg because there were so there were so many things that happened in the pandemic in terms of acquisitions of PPEs, all sorts of different gadgets. Nalalo yung mga nakakainis na mask na ginagamit natin noon na alam natin scientifically. Hindi mask, yung, yung face mask. Nalalo nyo yan? Na sabi nga nung iba, baka mas malala pa yan dahil i-attract pa niya yung, yung, yung germs and all of that. So, there were all sorts of mambo-jumbo stuff and, and also concerns about super expensive, guys. Super expensive vaccines including from China napakamali mga vaccines na ako natin China tapos sabi na mga makapili na yeah face shield sorry face shield yeah naan yung face shield na yan nasa Pilipinas lang nakikita mo na mandatory naala ko yung nag-face shield pa ako nung nag-international travel ako nung 2021 imagine guys naka-mask ka naka-face shield ka sa loob ng aeroplano right I mean that was insane and, and, and imagine if you're flying for 10-12 hours right and just to get to know na itong fa- face shield na yan, walang kwenta when it comes to, if anything, baka it's the opposite. It attracts the germs and everything like that, right? And gives you a false sense of security. And yet, makano yung ginasto sa mga yan? And, and, kasi mandatory siya, di ba? So everyone was supposed to buy it. So sino ang kumita dyan, di ba? So we can have a very serious discussion about, you know, all sorts of different things that went really, really wrong and were really, really crazy noong panahon ng pandemic. Not, let's not forget, the Philippines performed among the worst on earth when it came to pandemic, whether it's the number of casualties, number of um, no, people who contracted it, assuming, alam pa natin what was really happening. Uh, and also, of course, yung, yung economic uh, recession. Our economy almost contracted by 10% noong first year of pandemic, right? We had five quarters of recession. That's the worst ever. No one in Southeast Asia, in fact, no one in Asia suffered as much. The only country that malapit sa is India. Who was under Narendra Modi was very much like Digong in many ways, right? So, that's what I'm saying. But now, the Farmali issue really is coming back. Of course, the Farmali issue really became big just before the 2020 elections, but Digong was in power, and Digong was trolling openly, sila, uh, Dick Gordon, among others, diba? Um and anyone who wanted to go after him. And Digong was still very popular during the pandemic period. Of course, and dami pang mga binibigay na ayuda, ganun, ganun. His popularity actually shot up to, uh, you know, to, to more than 90% at some point. But this is the guy. This is the issue, guys. This is, here is the rub, right? If you look at actual studies, tsaka yung mga commission audit, etc., ang dami mga concerns with yung mga anomalia, tsaka mga scandals, and potential corruption scandals nung time ni Digong, no? Um... So in a 2021, in 2021, the Commission on Audit called out the Department of Health for deficiency in its handling of 67.3 billion pesos in COVID-19 funds. But Duterte was quick to clear the DOH and then Health Secretary Duque III. Sabi niya, it's impossible to steal 67.3 billion pesos. Stressing that the deficiency only meant that some documents required by Co- COA were missing. So, dito pa lang. Sabi ni Digong, I'm sorry, but I said, even if I'm the only one left, I will stand for Duque, even if it will bring me down. Alright? So, according to data from Paul Seisha, actually, approval rating Digong uh, was doing pretty okay uh, during the pandemic period. It, it shot up later on. But, but this is the thing, guys. Um, right Left and right, there were concerns about how much. So, so ito, based on COAS audit report, part of the 67.3 billion pesos handled by DOH for its response to health crisis was more than 40 billion pesos transferred to the procurement service of the Department of Budget and Management. The fund transfer of DOH to the PSDO DBM was flagged as it was made without the required memorandum of agreement and certification certificates of previous liquidation. In short, may mga shortcut shortcut jana in terms of paperwork and all, and you wonder why. Some, or 11.5 billion pesos of the over 40 billion pesos was paid to Farmali Pharmaceutical Corporation for medical PPE or personal protective equipment such as face mask and face shield. Alright, so this is very important, guys. 
this is where things got like really really tricky so ang dami mga ginastos na hindi nila ma- hindi natin alam ano pa ano yung paper trail uh, saan talaga ginastos kung ma-confirm ba natin yan and then here comes yung mga kontrata-kontrata na ginawa nila with private sector and quite dodgy dodgy one based on at least some of the reports that we're seeing here Ito yung corporation na yan was allegedly financed by Duterte's friend and former advisor, si Michael Yang, who was only, fo- and this was only four months before it bagged overwhelming contracts from the government. So if this is not suspicious, guys, I don't know what on earth is suspicious. And obviously, well before there was someone called Alice Go, right, whose, you know, origins is very questionable, there was Michael Yang, and no one knew who, who this guy was. Paano naging malakaning advisor? Pilipino ba ito? At ano ba talagang business niya, di ba? And of course, you can look at all those. So, ito guys. So, this is where things got really tricky. So, by 2019 pa lang, there were a lot of issues, concerns about corruption in our country. But things got even trickier, guys, when the pandemic happened. And then when COA, from inside the government, was flagging anomalies, Duterte himself will come, that, come in and shut down the debate and say, I stand by this guy. So, Seriosong problema talaga yan, guys. From March 2020 to July 2021, the then barely one-year-old company, itong Farmali, with less than 600,000 pesos capitalization, bagged 13 COVID-19 contracts. The capital was not even 1% of the value of deals it had with the government. Baka mas mayaman pa, pa tayo dito sa company na yan, di ba? Oh, 600,000 pesos lang yung capitalization niya. It was able to bag contracts worth, what, billions of pesos? However, both the company and Yang were defended by Duterte who stressed that it's quote-unquote business, referring to the COVID-19 deals backed by Farmali. He said, what is clear is that there was a contract, there was delivery, the specification were complete. In short, wag na, wag na titignan niyan. Okay na yan, tama na yan, pwede na yan, ganoon. Based on the data from COA, the biggest contract of Farmali, Pharmaceutical Corp- Corporation, had with the government was 3.8 billion pesos in May 2022 for millions of PPE sets worth 1,900 pesos each. Now, some of you may be medical experts. You tell me if that's a decent price. Now, ibang question pa kung decent pa yung quality ng mga PPE na binibigay nila kung legit pa talaga yan. Tapos, yung isang month, Ombudsman recommended the filing of charges against Duque and Lloyd Christopher Lau, who was then the head of the PSDBM over the illegal transfer of 40 billion pesos from March to December 2020 from DOH to PSDBM. So, but the ombudsman pumasok rin dito, hindi lang COA. Sa kanila, it was a violation of the anti graft and Corruption Practices Act and that Duque and Lau, Lau, quote, acted with evident bad faith or gross inexcusable neglect, negligence. So, ito po yung argument mismo ng ombudsman. Right? I mean, this is crazy, guys. Right? Now, ombudsman also said that Duke and Lau were, gravely, uh, were guilty of grave misconduct and con- conduct prejudicial to the best interest of the service for which they were merit the penalty of perpetual disqualification right in Poland and government na forfeit din yung kanilang retirement. But, if totoo na talagang marami, eh, na, well, like they care for all their retirement. Okay. Now, on June 3, 2020, Duque told the committee at the House of Representatives it was Duterte who ordered the transfer of over 40 billion pesos in COVID-19 funds. So now suddenly things make sense. Why would Duterte defend them? Well, maybe Duterte had a hand in these things. All right? Ito yung direct quote. Please check it out. I mean, guys, this is crazy. And it's crazy that we have to, we have to wait until 2024 for us na balikan itong issue na brazen. Brazen ito nangyari. Okay? So check it out, guys. Why would Duterte defend it? Defend this uh, case and try to shut down the debate? Because he himself made the decision that over 40 billion in COVID-19 funds would be transferred under quote-unquote suspicious circumstances. Duque naman said, kailangan yan, legal yan, kasi yun nga, severity of public health crisis. So they used yung crisis mode, emergency mode, to try to justify ito mga mumbo-jumbo, quick, quick, quick deals na yan under very, very suspicious circumstances. And more important, with very, very suspicious people. Michael Young! Ito, isang company naman na ginawa lang ng isang araw na ang total ano, niya, capitalization niya, wala pang 1 million pesos. To what? To be involved in billions of pesos of deals? My goodness. You tell me this is not suspicious at all. So, I think this is where the issue of corruption could sting, right? And could affect the powerful family. If 
Balikan talaga ang issue na to. And that's exactly what's happening right now, right? With more and more legislators and more and more people involved um, in, in, in legislative branch saying that talaga dapat balikan itong formal issue na yun kasi ito yung biggest scam talaga nangyari. Uh, well, arguably, you know, ever in Philippine history, right? I mean, all sorts of crazy stuff have been happening, right, in the Philippines, but this is next level. So, see, si Senator Gordon has been, well, former Senator Gordon has been back in the headlines in recent days. I think an interview din siya sa kabilang channels, among others. And he called talaga ito ay biggest scam. Sabi niya, what happened at Farmali is the biggest scam and the president of this country masterminded it. I can say that without batting an eye. All right. Wait, when is this again? Yeah, this is now. He should have said ex-president, right, of this country. Because he obviously he's not referring to, to BBM, right? So what happened in the is the biggest scam and the president of this country or ex-president of this country masterminded it. I can say that without batting an eye. I think it's been Gordon, okay? And remember, Gordon and Laxon were the two guys who were really overseeing this investigation for quite some time. But in nga eh, she not down sila effectively eh. Tapos inaway-away pa sila directly ni, Digo, ni Gong, binastos pa sila, parang, di ba, parang personal attack pa yung ginawa niya, so, laki ng chan mo, Gordon, mga ganun, 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 ganun pa siya ni, ano, di ba, Digong yung time na yan. Talagang binuli-buli lang siya ni Digong, di ba, nung time na yan. Right, so, ito yung direct quotes from Gordon, you can see it yourself. So, so obviously, si Gordon, siya yung chairman ng Senate Blue Ribbon Committee nung time na yan, um, and they had at least 18 hearings and Subnet the Committee reported the Ombudsman. In fact, we filed the case. Gordon detailed the misappropriation of funds stating that Duterte transferred 47 billion pesos and quote, when the COA investigated, Duterte cursed at them. He was angry because Christopher Lau was exposed. Duterte's administration never answered for it. Now they are scared. Former uh, Senator Dr uh, Drilon said Duque is afraid. It is now pointing to Duterte. Ayan na maglalaglagan na sila. So he added that he told Duque to resign if he, hadn't, he didn't want to follow orders. If he followed his libel, he only, his only chance is to be state witness against Duterte. So, ito na ang usapan na ngayon. Kung ano mangyari ngayon kay Duque. If Duque wants to save his own, ano, he will have to stand witness. And if this order really came all the way from former President Duterte, then he has to stand by that uh, under oath, right? So, we're entering some very interesting situation whereby the very branding of Duterte as anti-corruption and all of that is now under question and there could be some serious political and legal implications just when the Gong is also be, being investigated for all other things including gentleman's agreement and of course ultimately the ICC issue. So all of these things are coming together guys, are coming together. So yung mga, ano dyan, yung mga fanatiko dyan na hindi nag -iisip, or nagbubulag-bulagan, or pinipilit nila mga na, no, bahala kayo sa buhay nyo, bahala ng Diyos sa inyo, at soon, bahala na rin ang hustisya sa mga idol nyo, mga kulto nyo, alright? So, lots of interesting things are happening here, guys. So, on that note, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it here because hintayin natin ano pa yung mga susunod na mga pangyayari dyan sa Senate. I mean, imagine how big a deal it was for Maricel Soriano to pop up in one of those hearings. How big a deal the Alisco investigations became. But, imagine if Digong, or someone close to Digong, right, is dragged to the hearings. Well, Senate, I'm not sure about Senate, because I don't see, I don't, I don't know. But, maybe in the Congress, or somewhere along those lines. So, we're entering some very interesting territories here. And think natin how the Marcos administration will work on this, and let's look at how the rest of the people will look at this. Unfortunately, with fanatics, hopeless case, mga yan. But soft voters, soft backers, yung mga iba dyan na medyo pwede mag-swing, tignan natin how they're gonna react to this. On that note, thank you very much. Maraming salamat again sa lahat ng mga sumuporta sa atin, sa lahat ng nalas sa atin. Thank you so much again for your constructive criticisms and comments and your support. Please continue to support us also on Spotify and podcast natin on Apple. Kulang pa tayo ng ratings. Medyo mataas naman ang rating sa atin. Thank you. But we need more people to rate us para lumabas tayo dun sa algorithm. Again, deep dive with Richard Heydarian. Just lagay lang Heydarian, Richard Heydarian. Lalabas yan sa Boots, Spotify, and dito sa Apple Podcast. Please continue to support us. Also, of course, tuloy-tuloy lang sana itong uh, pag-subscribe niyo sa YouTube channel natin. And of course, yung iba, may problema sila sa notification dito sa Facebook. Please make sure that you press the notification on kasi may mga changes na ginawa ng Facebook para alam niyo naman when we're going live. On that note, thank you very much. God bless and talk to you soon.